Hello, I'm at Subo Journal. Now, today's Friday. Praise God. You know, we just have to end this Esther story today. Praise God. Now, we, we are in chapter 6. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we bless you. We see these things because you're no respecter of anyone. What you did for the Jews in the days of Esther, you freely are doing for us today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> we, we just saw what befell Haman. We just saw what happened to him. Now, he led Mordecai all the way and honored him and went back home. Now, look at what happened when he got home. <laughs> Verse 12. Chapter 6, Book of Esther. Afterward, Mordecai went back to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his house, money. <laughs> oh, you, 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 you imagine that day he wanted to come back dragging Mordecai to the gallow. That, that's the plan. That was the plan. Praise God. But now he came back home. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. And with his head covered, verse 13, when Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men, now notice, <laughs> this is amazing, notice something here. This is the first time the Bible is calling them wise men. The first time, just say his friends and Zeresh, his wife. Now, he said, hmm. when Haman, verse 13 again, and when Haman, when Haman had told his wife and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wise men, meaning amongst his friends, he had wise men. Where were they? No, look, look at what he said. Hmm. His wise men and his wife Zeres said to him, if Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of a Jewish descent. You will not prevail against him, but you will surely fall before him. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, where didn't they know that this same Mordecai they told him to build a gallop for was a Jew before? Where was this wisdom when they were giving him that counsel to go dig a gallop for him? Where was this? Now, now, notice what they said. They said, ah, ah, come, come, come. Maybe they didn't know. I don't understand. They must have known. Because he was planning to kill all the Jews. Why were they killing all? Why was he planning to kill all the Jews? Because of Mordecai. So he knew Mordecai was a Jew. And then they said to him, ah, 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 ah. Brother Heman, is Mordecai a Jew? Yeah, he's a Jew. And yeah, that's why I want to kill him now. Ah, 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 You're in trouble. Trouble. What kind of trouble? If Mordecai is a Jew, the one whom before you have begun to fall, forget it. You will not prevail against him. You will surely fall. Why didn't you guys tell me this before? Is it me that thought of putting... It's not you that told me to build a gallop. Are you getting it now? That is how wicked people advised the king to their downfall. Advice they themselves would not do is what they will tell the king. <clears throat> mm, verse, verse 14. While they were still talking with him, the, king Enoch, the king's Enoch came and hastened to bring him unto the banquet which Esther had prepared. Now I can just imagine ah, at least ah, something 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 else to take about to take away this sorrow away from. <laughs> ah, I've got I've got to eat with the king. Now nothing looked bad yet. Just that his plan to eliminate Mordecai had failed. But something bigger was coming. So the king, chapter 7 now, so the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. And on the second day at the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. 
And what is your request? Up to half the kingdom, and it shall be done. Then S. Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we have been sold, my people and I, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. Wow. I'm looking at how Esther chose her words. <clears throat> you, you can't read this story and not notice that. How she spoke. Now imagine you being the listener of this speech. Very sound. Where did that come from? From the place of prayer. This is why we pray. This is why we pray. People don't understand. When we pray for favor, this is why we pray for favor. Not so that something will rub, but rub, so God just rubs on them. You just get there. And when you get everyone will just start behaving foolish because of you. No. They will respond to something you are doing or you are saying. That's how it works. So when we pray for favor, God puts the right words in our mouth. When we stand before men to speak, somehow the, the words are just coming out properly. The sequence is just right. The way that they're like, ah, who, who taught this guy to speak like this? This guy can speak like this. Then I want to walk with this person. <laughs> See, that's how it works. Because God knows how to reach everyone's heart. This is why we pray. So when somebody say, eh, this, this matter is not prayer. This matter requires action. What action? Foolish actions that will put you in trouble. Or actions that is going to display the wisdom and perfection of God. That no man can fault. Mm. So Esther told the king, hey, this, this is what's going on. God, the, uh, take time to look at these words again. Now, because of time. So King Ahasuerus answered and said to Esther, to Queen Esther, who is he? And where is he? Who would dare presume in his heart to do such a thing? Oh, King, you signed the document. Didn't you read it before he signed it? Watch this. <clears throat> and Esther said, The adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. And this was when Haman realized that he had entered a big pot of soup. <laughs> so Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Me? <laughs> Then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life. For he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, will you also assault, assault the queen while I am in the house? Oh my God. Listen, when angels have finished cooking your soup, <laughs> this is what happened to him, man. When angels have finished plotting your life and decided it is time to deliver it, there is no escaping. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Listen, I don't know why we are terrified when we hear the enemy is planning something against you. What is terrifying you? The only thing that will terrify is when you don't know your God. For the people who know their God shall be strong and they will do exploits. He didn't say that the enemy is not there. He didn't say that the enemy doesn't look strong. But the people who know their God, strength belongs to them. Exploit is their own. Nobody can prevent them from doing exploits. He didn't say the people who know their God shall fight their enemies. No, no, no. That's never in your place. Now, was it in the place of Esther to fight Haman? No. Was it in the place of Mordecai to fight Haman? No. No. 
no, no. What was their own? Do the will of God. Do what the word of God wants them to do. Lord, what do you want me to do? That's what we pray. That's, how, that's our prayer for Lord. What would you have me do in this situation? You say 10,000 people are coming against you. Don't stop. Oh God, kill them before they get here. Deal with them. Now you are focusing on the wrong thing. That's why God may not answer that prayer. And lots of believers have died like this. Because their faith was not in God towards them. Their faith was in the ability of their enemy against them. Now you just imagine this. The king, Esther just told the king, say, what? Ah, in his wrath, he got up and he went into the palace, palace garden. And while he was there, Hema went before the king, queen, please. I beg, everything I've done, I will withdraw it. I'm sorry. Please help me beg the king. Please now. Please spare my life. And Esther was like, what do you want me to do? Before you know what happened, as she was turning, he, 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 hey, please, he was, and then he, he fell across her. And that's the same time the king just walked and said, ah, I'm still in this palace. You are harassing my wife. You are dead. Watch. Mm. <laughs> Watch this. I said, when angels cook someone's soup. Watch. Then the king said, we're reading the last part of verse 8 now. Then the king said, will he also assault the queen while I am in the house? As the word left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Now, Habona, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, look, the gallow, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallow that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was subsidized. <laughs> now, number one, Esther had the right words to speak to the king. Number two, God was at work when he gave the king sleepless nights. The same night that Haman had made up his mind to go ask for the king, for Mordecai's head. The same night, the favor, and remember I told you something the other day. When Haman saved the king's life, possibly he was expecting a reward, but nothing happened. It was saved for this season. Imagine, so sometimes delay, delay doesn't mean denial. God is preparing that harvest you're looking for. He has not forgotten. You heard him. You knew God was going to do something. You knew you were almost at that place of miracle. But something, something just, it just left. You can't explain it. Brothers and sisters, the fact that you cannot explain it doesn't mean there is no explanation. It is you that don't have the wisdom for it yet. But let me assure you of something. There is no word that God has spoken to you that will fall to the ground. Number two, there is no good that you have done in his name. Now, when I mean good, I'm not just talking about helping people and being nice and good to them. I'm talking about every obedience of faith that you display towards God. None will go unrewarded. <clears throat> the reward may not come when you're expecting it to come. It doesn't mean that it is not coming. It is going to come at the time when it has been cooked and prepared and ready, that even you will be grateful to God. I imagine if, if the king woke up that night and said, oh, yeah, read. And then he read, Mordecai saved him. What has been done to him? And then someone said, oh, king, you remember now, you, you bought him a car. Oh, oh, okay, good. Next, 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 next. But when he said, What? The right person was there. You know, that's the, you know, I told you, praying for all men. Pray that every man that have to do with you will come under the influence of God's spirit. What if the servants that day just said, Man, well, king, we don't know. You know, we're just a servant that is hanging around the, the, the king's gates. You know, I don't think he minds anything. Yeah, someone would have said that. <clears throat> but the person that was there that day came under the influence of the spirit. The king, what has been said, king? Nothing. I'm, I'm sure the way he said it angered the king. I mean, in a righteous way. You know, king, you know it's not your character. <laughs> Nothing has been done to the man. We're all shocked. What? Nah, 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 nah. See, that's why the king didn't say, okay, tomorrow. No, no, no. He said, hmm, what do we do? What? Who's in the courtyard? Hey, man, 
Call him, call him, call him. Hey, man, what am I going to... Immediately the king gave the order. The next... Now, when Esther finally made her request, guess what? When the king came back and said, what? You want, you want to harass my wife? There was a eunuch standing there also that said, King, do you know this Haman built a gallow that he wants to hang Mordecai? What? He did that also? Yes. Go and hang him there. And that was the end. And what happened? Then the king's wrath was subdued. And everyone had rest. Mordecai was honored. And the whole Jews had rest. Don't tell me God is sleeping. Don't tell me God is sleeping. You just don't know what he is doing. Now that's the, the thing only prayer can do for you. <clears throat> the situation we are now in our country, don't think God is sleeping. Go to the place of prayer and let God show you what he is doing and your own part, what he wants you to do. That's what you owe God and your nation. That's why the Bible says we should pray for all men, for kings, and for those in authority. Listen, we are praying, and God is acting, and we will see the results. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye-bye.